Hello. Well, all right, man. What's going on? Hey, man. I'm up today. Can't complain. Oh, that's what's up, man. That's what's up. Well, at least somebody's enjoying their day off before the weekend. So how 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 how, I mean, how 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 you doing it? Like you 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 off on the weekdays and work the weekends or or what? Oh no, I'm still. I joined another OTR company, but um, you know, right now uh, they they're upgrading my truck a little bit, putting a deer guard on and, and whatnot. So I'm just chilling at the terminal. Taz yeah. in the building. All right, man. So what else been going on with you, man? How's uh, how's things going? I mean, since I left Tyson, um, everything has been great. I can't even complain. All right. So before we get into all of that, I want to thank you for coming on and everything. Do appreciate it. Appreciate it. Um, no, no problem. No problem. All right. So go ahead and introduce yourself and uh, tell the people what you used to do before trucking. Well, uh, I mean, my full name is uh, Aratiza, uh Yasharala, but, you know, people uh, uh, call me Taz uh, for uh, short. Uh, That's wait, a mouthful. Wait, wait. Your name is what? <laughs> Aratiza Yasharala. Yeah. Uh, what? <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, I know it's a mouthful. Uh, uh, okay, help, help me out here. Aratuza <laughs> Yasharala. Yasharala. Close enough. <laughs> okay, okay. So let's 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 talk about your name, bro. So where where are you from? I mean, I'm originally from New York, but I've been living in uh, Virginia for about seventeen years. Seventeen. Uh, okay. So where? So what's your background? Where, where are your family from? Oh well, I mean, the reason for the name is uh, I'm an Israelite. That's why. Oh, okay. O okay. 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 But you, so you shorted it up and just made it easy for everybody else to be like, just call me Taz. <laughs> well, you know, or somebody actually, they shortened it for me. So they was like, yeah, I'm just call you Taz. So yeah, I was like, all right, that works. You're like, yeah, that, that'll work. We, we're going to leave it at that. Okay. Okay. That's what's <laughs> up, bro. That's what's up, man. Um, so your background is, uh, uh not Muslim, uh, Israelite, uh, um, uh, you know, Hebrew Israelite. Mm hmm. Oh, okay. but um, yeah. oh, okay, okay. I, you know, I, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to disrespect your religion by messing up what, what, you know, what it is. So, my apologies for that. Um, no, you good, man. You good. Oh, okay, okay. So that's what's up, man. All right. So before trucking, man, what, what, what you used to do before, beforehand? I mean, you know, a lot of warehouse work. You know, a little this, a little that. You know, some of this, some of that. So it's been, you know. Basically, just whatever I could do to get bread to put, you know, food on the table for the family. That's what's up, man. That's what's up. All right. So doing that little time of uh of uh you know doing this and that, what what made you you know what what made you get into trucking? Like, what gave you the idea? Um, actually, um, I was actually homeless for three months. And um, it was me, my children, and my now uh, my now wife. Mm -hmm. uh, we was in there for about three months. And while we was in there, I seen a um, a little flyer for Goodwill saying that they had a uh, CDL classes there. Mm -hmm. So we went there, and um, it just was around the time where I was getting my income tax check. Mm -hmm. So we went down there and. We seen what they was about, and then I was like, "Yo, I'm I'm gonna go for it. I'm gonna invest in myself." And I was like, "You want to do it too?" And she, you know, she she got a college degree, so she wasn't even thinking about you know doing trucking. And she was like, "You know what? Let's do it." And you know, from there, the rest is history. Oh, okay, so you so so you and your now wife both have a CDL. Guess that was sort of like a. Uh like a blessing to see that poster where you where you guys was at to give you the idea that you guys could make a better life for yourself uh by getting into trucking um so right, right. so you say uh you said you went in there at the time of your uh at the time of your income tax so you you paid out of pocket for for your cdl uh, the the initial um uh, a fee it was like um a thousand dollars down, mm -hmm. and then you know it was returned to me by uh, my first our first company was U.S. Express so they they gave that back. 
Okay, 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 okay. That's what's up, man. That's what's up. So congratulations on that. Um so you and your wife both got a uh, both got y'all see so y'all went to the so y'all went to the same school, the same program, right? Same program, same school at the same time. Okay, that's what's up. That's what's up. All right, so now that you got your CDL and you said your first company was uh, U.S. Express, was that for you and your wife uh, both went to U.S. Express to train out to get your experience or she went somewhere else or or what? No, correct. No, we, we both went to U.S. Express, but she went on a truck with uh, her trainer. I went on a truck with my trainer. And then, you know, after our training was over, we uh, she she got her first load and came pick me up in, uh, I believe it was Markham. Illinois. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, we, we worked for it about a year and then, you know, she got off the truck, you know, to start raising a family. Mm-hmm. And I've been, you know, cause I've been driving for a little over six years now. Oh, okay. Okay. So that's how long you've been in there and, and U S express was, uh, was, was the first company shout out to U S express. That was my first company as well. Um, okay. <laughs> but, uh, but you, you know, you guys, you, 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 you guys manifested a plan to only stay with us express for a year or was there a reason why you 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 guys decided to bounce from us express because at that time from what i heard you know six years ago because it's about the same same time that i that i've been driving uh us express for teams was 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 where the money was at yeah, it, it 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 was okay. I mean, we were rookies, so I didn't you know expect to you know make a million dollars. But once she got off the truck, that's when things changed. Oh, okay, okay. So everything, so everything was gravy, as as you driving teams with you and your wife as it should. But when she, you know, right. but y'all two came to a came to an agreement that it was time for her to you know to, to take care of the family, which. Uh, which is a good idea to come off the truck, you know, because you know both of y'all can't be cross country and and having somebody else raise the kid. But um, but after she got off the truck, that's when you start experiencing some problems with U.S. Express. Did, did you try to? Did you try to do teams? Solo. Um, I I have driven with other drivers, and you know my my, my wife is very a uh, very good instinctual driver. I don't trust any. I don't trust to drive with anybody else because me and her have a vested interest to get back home safe to our family mm. together. So you know I, I don't trust other people driving. But um, I I was on the flex fleet. That was the last thing that I was when I was at U.S. Express on the flex fleet, and you know fluctuating between Dollar General and Walmart and mm. And it wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't cutting it. You know, the, the checks were getting a little lower, you know, but I, I, it just wasn't cutting it. So I was like, you know, cause I, U.S. Express did help me buy a house. I, right. You know, I'm not going, going to lie, but the, the trajectory of what it would cost to maintain that house, U.S. Express was not going to provide for me as being a solo driver. Okay, that's what's up. That's what's up. All right. So, did you did did you take your concerns to your fleet manager at the time? Did you, or you just said, "Bump it"? Let me just go ahead and start looking for you know other opportunities. Well, actually, I did both. Um, you know, I started looking for other opportunities, but then I, I explained you know my concerns, and basically, I was told, "Well, you know, it it, it is what it is. Like we'll." look to see if we can find you something else, you know, within, you know, the company. But, you know, basically I wouldn't say it was a cap, but it wasn't really much he could do. Well, you know, I, I thought I was going to be the, you know, when I, when I came in the truck and I, I thought, you know, as a rookie, you know, I thought the first company was going to be my, my retirement company. You know what I'm saying? I thought I was going to get in and, um, and and retire you know that's what the recruiter told me you know I, I the recruiter came to our school and you know she poured the milk on you know saying that u.s express was was this that and the third and our company is the best and our 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 drivers love it and and i i was like oh, okay well yeah you know i you know filled out the application they accepted me they you know it took a little minute to get me in but you know they got me in and then all of a sudden you know, I went out with the first trainer, which was garbage. The second trainer was all right. Um, 
I went, you know, I went, did the damn thing, but I, I started feeling some kind of way, like, yo, I'm I'm supposed to be an OTR driver driving, you know, all over. And I'm I'm right. just being stuck up in the northeast, like, okay, y'all, y'all, y'all don't right, have right. Y'all, y'all don't have nowhere else that y'all can send me. And every time and every time I, I question it, it's like, oh, freight is slow. Oh, uh, we can't we we can't get you down, you know. We can't get you no more than what we getting you right now. And I'm like, yeah, it's it, it's time to it, it's it's time to look. It, it, and as I was looking, you know, they 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 came across one of the videos that I made about the Qualcomm, and and I guess you could say the West is history after that. Um, <laughs> all right, so you so you left uh, U.S. Espresso. You know, we're gonna fast track it. So, okay. throughout your six years, how many companies you worked at before you got with Tyson? Uh, just it was just U.S. Express and then straight to Tyson. Like I, I left U.S. Express mm-hmm. uh, one week and I was at Tyson three days later. Okay, that's what's up. That's what's up. And and for you guys out there that's that's interested in you know bouncing from company to company is always always good to you know to get a little bit experience at least a year but just know like you can call you can be at one company one day and then you could call the company and then they can set everything up for me so if you in illinois and the company that you're going to is in minnesota they'll give you either a plane ticket from illinois to minnesota you don't have to necessarily go all the way back home unless you want to you know, whatever situation. Right. But, uh, so you said, uh, so you said straight to Tyson, huh? The, 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 what was, what was the, in the beginning, what was the allure? Because I know you, you left a lengthy, uh, text in the, uh, in, in, in the, uh, comments. <laughs> yeah, and, I I do, <laughs> and I do appreciate that. But, uh, what, what was the allure? What, what was the allure of Tyson for you? Um, well, I mean, I, I knew, you know, just just the basics of, of Tyson and, and what kind of company they are, and um, you know, and I've heard some things about they had good benefits, and which is true, they do have a good benefit package. Mm-hmm. But they were the company that stuck out that were paying as much as they were paying and mm-hmm. progressing the pay faster than any company that I've ever seen. Because when I started with Tyson, I was making fifty one cents. Mm. I only worked for them for four, four, four years and I would say uh, three months. And they bumped me up every year until uh, I capped out at 57. All right. 57 cent a mile. Yes. Okay. So 57, 57 cent. What, what was the miles you was averaging? Um, it, it would fluctuate because I went through uh, three dispatchers. Um, when, when I first started, I was making I was I was making a lot of miles, but then as the years progressed, it got a little shorter. Mm-hmm. Um, but I still was making good money. I, I mean, at Tyson, I was averaging, uh, I would say, in four and a half years, um, probably about seventy two, seventy five between there. Oh, okay, okay. So that was uh, av- so that was your average year. Uh, what was the uh, so you got into Tyson? Uh, you rocked out mm-hmm. with Tyson. What, what do you want the people to know uh, about Tyson during your duration there? I mean, they, they were a good company. Um, you know, very professional and cordial people. It, it, my only issue was knowing how big of a corporate giant that Tyson was mm-hmm. to not pay the tension pay was, you know, I mean, it, it started... The, the straw that broke the camel's back was them trying to mandate me putting, a, you know, a needle in my body and them not going all out for their drivers and paying for all their time. At oh. least at least 80 to 90 percent. OK, now I heard that, you know, I as a matter of fact, I did a make the call to Tyson prior to all this, you know, prior to all this. Uh, this vaccine mandate and all like that because somebody in the comments wanted me to revisit them and ask them about the about the the vaccine. Right. So 
you so and my big issue was they mandated the vaccine before it was actually approved so that got my mind rolling i'm like how could a company mandate something that is not approved and then when i spoke to hr they was like well it's approved now and i'm like but you mandated it before it was approved so that that in my mind put two and two together y'all two you know big farm and big chicken are in league with each other wow so well let me let me back up before before we even touch on uh touch on that so with tyson basically you would do I, I, what what was your what was your lanes there like what was your did you do like just a a, a regional route from from distribution to distribution or you did distribution to stores how you know what what was what was your route or lanes it was a mix between distribution um uh sometimes from terminal tyson terminal to tyson terminal uh you know, it, it was it was a mix of, of both um the, the lanes were most east uh east of i-35 oh okay okay that's what's up and you was um and of course she was getting so what was you said the miles was you know was depleting throughout the years but what was the average miles that you was averaging oh you broke up oh wait a minute yeah i, I kind of see where i'm at all right there you go i got it back all right, can you hear me now yeah i can hear you loud and clear all right so what was the you know you said that the miles was depleting throughout the years but what was your average miles that you was getting? Um, 2,500. Um, but when I first started, it was more like 28. Oh, okay. They was giving you close to 3,000. That's why I keep telling everybody that don't, don't, even though companies will say, yeah, we, we're going to give you 3,000 miles. Yeah, we got the miles here. Yeah, you can get 35, yada, yada, yada. Don't, don't inspect that every week you know or every time you know expect the it, yeah it's true yeah expect the a, a balance and that's about between 25 and 28 anything anything above that is a bonus you know anything above that yeah, is, is is a bonus so so you you doing about you doing about twenty five hundred miles? You still getting paid? You still getting paid good money even with uh, twenty five hundred miles? Um, you say you went through three dispatchers and everything. Uh, how was your home time there? What? How did they get? Did they get you home every week? Every other week? Uh, every twelve uh, every twelve days was the uh you know the the minimum. Oh, okay, okay. So you will go out. They, they, they were they were really good with home time. Like I, I really don't, you know, I can't complain too much about how they, you know, did their home time because sometimes, like, I only qualify for two days home, and I'm like, listen, I, I need more time before I come out the house. It's like, I right, just call us back when you're ready to come out. So you know, on that front, they they were very good when it came to you know work and and, uh, and life balance. All right, that's what's up. That's what's up. All right, so during so during the time there, did you uh did you know when you went home and came back, was you able to take the truck home or did you slip seat or what? No, yes. Um well they do slip seat, but because the area that I live in, mm -hmm. there wasn't a, a terminal for another hundred and fifty miles and basically I, I I was allowed to take the home. Now if you live near a terminal, they'll require you to take it to a terminal so that while you're at home, somebody else can use your truck. Oh, that's crazy. Okay, that's now, it's not always guaranteed, but sometimes, like if 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 you're at a terminal and and you broke down, you can ask to borrow somebody else's truck and run, mm -hmm. you know, uh, run shuttle loads because their shuttle loads pay really well. While you're waiting for your truck, because if you have a truck available and you don't take it, you won't get layover pay. Because they don't pay breakdown pay. They don't break. I mean, they don't pay. So if if you're not doing anything, if you're not running while your truck is in a shop for more than twenty four hours, you you're not getting that. You're not getting that layover pay. 
unless if you if there's a truck available for you and you don't take it, no. Oh, okay. So they trying to make it. They trying to make it on you whether or not. Uh, whether or not uh, it's your responsibility to keep running, but if they don't have, right now, it, but if they don't have no trucks available, then of course you're gonna have to get that layover pay, right? Right. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Right. 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 All right. So, I mean, they they pay for your hotel and everything, but you know, if you choose not to go to work, then you know, you, you, you know, and and most people would elect to do the shuttle loads because they uh, they had a sliding scale when it comes to running the shuttle loads. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it was, uh, it was it was very profitable to do shuttle loads. Okay, that's what's up. So, now we, now it's either or on a layover pay. What about, now what about detention? Because this is, uh, you know, you guys is running reefer. So, of course, you know, um, being now, let me ask you this: Being a company driver, is it more on a drop and hook side, or do you guys gotta wait until they till they load you guys and unload you? No, it, it was usually mostly dropping a uh, uh, pick, like dropping hook. Um, now we did a lot of live loading when it came to like distribution centers like Walmart or Aldi or something like right. that. But usually when it comes to, you know, because it was Tyson's their own freight, so we would pick up loaded trailers. Oh, okay. Now, let me ask you this. Is the places that you're going to, are those the houses that that, that, that actually uh, process the chicken? The, 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 the last, no, no. The last stock comes in and and, yeah, all, all that good stuff. No, that, no, they have, a, they, have, they have a fleet for that. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they got a special fleet for that. I was kind of wondering. They got a special fleet for the chickens and the live feed. Yeah, I was kind of wondering if 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 you guys go to the same places as the as the slaughterhouses that that they process the 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 livestock. Now there, there are there are some terminals where they do. Um, uh, you have both the the live uh the live haul. The live chicken haulers mm -hmm. and some of the uh, you know the OTR or the local drivers in the same place, but you know they're always on different sides of the building. But yeah, there they, they are quite a few places that are like that. Okay, ha have you have you been inside of one of one of them or no? Um, I haven't been inside except for the, you know the the shipping or the receiving office, but uh, you know the. You can't help but to see, you know, the, the chickens and, you know, the manure flying everywhere. So you got to stay on guard because you don't want to get hit in the face with, you know, this, this piece of chicken wad. Yeah. I mean, every time I see, every time I see, you know, livestock on the road and I, you know, I see the, the haulers taking them, I always look at it and I'll be like, yeah, that's, that's your last ride right there. Woo. Yeah, it can, uh, yeah. 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 I couldn't do it. And it's just it is just kind of sad when you see all the, you know see all the all the livestock in 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 those uh in those hauler trailers. You just look at them and you just feel for yourself like <laughs> yeah, you, you don't you, you don't you don't think about that when you know all all that goes away when you eat that piece of fried chicken, you know what I'm saying? Exactly, man. Exactly. It all you know, you I and I I I just wanted what I want to do is actually talk or interview someone that actually works in a in a slaughterhouse and see if doing, you know, preparing them for, you know, consumption does that changes you as far as you know as far as uh the your eating habits because for a person that don't work in there of course you know i right. I, I eat steak you know well done you know it's it's nothing like a good steak it smells good and everything it's nothing like bacon and eggs you know what i'm saying uh, you know right. I, I, it's it's nothing like that everything smells they bring the plate <sighs> that's some good aroma but then, if you're an actual person that's working in there, that actually got to prepare the animals, you know, chop off. Yeah, it's a different their, story. It's yeah, a different, it's a different story. In the whole process. 
Right. So yeah, I, 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 I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't I can imagine. I, I mean, I don't think I can. It's I, I, I said to myself as I was growing up because, you know, you, you, you need people to do virtually different things. So it's just a matter of if you got the stomach or the or the mindset to do it. So me, I, I knew that that working in a funeral and working in a in a slaughterhouse would be two places that I don't think I can do. <laughs>